It's streaming is on. Oh, hello. So starting the fourth meeting of the architecture team, um, uh, the links to the pad where we take meeting notes is like in the chat description, wherever. Um, I'm going to link it here as well, just in case. Uh, feel free to append stuff if you feel like it. Um, I'll try to take meeting notes this time again. Um, also leading the meeting. So uh, quick administration uh, member updates. Uh, John uh, Erickson isn't here, but he hasn't applied yet as a formal team member. I'm going to ping him for that. Um, then we are streaming to YouTube now, so that's great. Also uploading, uh, uploaded the past meetings to that new YouTube channel. Uh, the Dropbox storage has run out, so I can't even record meetings to my Dropbox anymore. Um, Right, and then third thing, the format of these meetings. I've gotten feedback from Robert, uh, the uh, one of the current team members, that kind of discussing technical details for an hour might be a bit too, uh, might not be super efficient when we do it in a meeting like that. It might be better to kind of explore this more asynchronously and write things down more properly. Um, I think writing down would be good anyways, but yeah, maybe these meetings should uh, be more for like right communication between the team, like what everybody's doing. Uh, more stand-up like meetings, perhaps. Uh, Alyssa mentioned that uh, you wouldn't like stand-up meetings very much. Uh, can you maybe go into that a bit, or what? What are your thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I have joined, uh, I've joined all the meetings so far. Um, but the reason that I have not applied to join the team is, um, and, and wouldn't come if they were just stand up meetings or whatever, is that I don't have a lot of time at the moment to um, follow and work on proposals. Um, and it's very easy for me to block out an hour each week and attend a meeting and uh, uh, talk about things and uh, 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 have input uh, on them. But it would be difficult for me to follow that if it was, um, if I, if it was uh, entirely asynchronous. Um, and uh, a stand-up meeting would therefore not be very interesting to me because uh, for me, the point of coming to these meetings is to have those uh, uh, technical discussions. Um, and I think that you can get a long way with technical discussions if you have them uh, synchronously that would take you days or weeks to have. Yeah, yeah. That makes, makes a lot of sense. Um... Yeah, yeah. Um, so there, I do think, uh, right, like both. Uh, so there will be members that do have some time and ones that don't. I imagine most people don't have a lot of time and they just join these early weeking, early meetings every week. Um, but we should also, for the members who have the time, at least those should be able to like quickly communicate that what they're working on. Um, although I guess that could also be done asynchronously, uh, but I think it's it's nice to sync up in a quick way that uh, in the meeting. Uh, what what do you think of just like the meeting starting out with like um, those people who have done work in the past week quickly talking about that? I don't know, might be five minutes, might be ten. That's usually how long stand ups tend to last in my experience, and then these would also kind of lead to more discussions, more technical discussions about the individual topics. Uh, but the people who aren't interested in having live technical discussions could also then drop out. So it's mainly for like synchronizing people, um, but then fairly open technical discussion. 
So that sounds fine. Um, as long as there is some sort of, as long as someone making sure that time doesn't like run on too long for the uh, stand up rant before we can move on to the rest of the meeting. Yeah, um, sounds great. All right. Um, Tom, do you also think that's fine? Um, there's pros and cons, so I don't, I don't have a strong opinion either way. All right. Yeah. All right. So, since uh, I assume everybody else is also fine with this, um, so I, th I think let's go with that for now. Um, all right. Then, um, so so I guess let's uh, let's have a quick stand up. I personally did not a whole lot. I read a bunch of documentation about uh, geeks and uh, also took a look at Lua, just kind of learning Lua a bit and then seeing what the language is all about, um, just to kind of see what the proposed alternatives to Bash would look like. Um, we also had, right on, on the channel, we had a discussion about um, the Geeks and its uh, scheme Lisp, which has right the whole discussion about um, Oh, I forgot the word, but some Home. some property of the language. Homo iconicity. Yeah, and, and and how there's like kind of, it's kind of hard to define it properly. There's some might be useful and might not be useful. Um anyways, I, I just took a look at that. Um also uh went started writing a small document for kind of really figuring out what the problems with bash are. Uh, because we, it's hard to solve a problem if we don't really know what it is, and so like what the uh, requirements would be for uh, for replacing Bash. Um, yeah, pretty much that. Um, I assume nobody else has done much, but if anybody has looked into something, you can mention that now. All right, um, JK. After some of the homo iconicity stuff, I, I did have a look to see if you could um, find it in many other languages. Uh, I found an interesting blog post of someone discussing whether you could do it using Lua and Lua's maps. But I don't think they got much further than the blog post. Um, I also tried to look for any kind of other minimal shells, a bit like oil and conch. Um, there was one that was Lua based, but it wasn't particularly minimal. It was built using Rust. It's called Hush, and it's I don't th I don't think it's seen much movement. Um, but that's pretty much all I've looked into. Um. I did yeah. uh, read about the um, I think it was like expect line or um, exact that. line, exact line, uh, exact exact line. Um, and I looked through that a little bit to see kind of what's going on there. Um, it's you know there might be some benefits there in terms of like efficiency or correctness, but then writing it is also problematic. And then so we'd have to have a lot of helpers for that. And then so now it's a question of like a trade off between eval time and complexity of, you know, now we have to have a generator for that, you know, underlying runner language. So whether or not that's kind of worth it seemed a little bit tenuous to me. Um, I wasn't necessarily convinced at this point. Um, yeah. Uh... Yeah, there's definitely a trade-off there with the helpers needed, and uh, but yeah, nice. Um, I, I I do think exit line is a very 
very interesting project and has has at least some potential for for next. Um, all right, I'm just quickly finishing up the notes a bit. Uh, by the way, I, I wrote the things you mentioned in the document. If you want to add something, feel free to. Um, yeah, but otherwise, let's um, let's go into more technical discussions now. Um, so, right, maybe maybe we can start off with. Uh, I mean, that's the thing I tried to figure out. Like, what are the requirements, or like, what are the real problems with Bash? Even um, so, one of the things I looked into is just looking at. Uh, at bash code in next packages and seeing how or why that's a problem uh, and kind of trying to find complexities that are really hard to implement in, in bash where other languages might be better at it. Um, yeah, and, and there, are, there is a lot of bash code in, in next packages. Uh, Cross compilation is one of one pretty big one, I think. Uh, yeah, and other bits and bobs here and there. Yeah. Um, I don't know, does anybody have like any any comments on that? Why why do we want to replace Bash? What are the main uh, the main motivations? So I do have something. I don't think it's a main motivation. Um, I know, I think uh, cross compiling bash to Windows is also a bit of a hassle. And at least that's, I thought it's not really nice to do that with the default bash code. But that's not really important because Windows is not, is a very much, uh, <laughs> Not supported platform, I guess, at this point in next packages. Yeah, I couldn't quite hear, but um, I think uh, this might be similar. Which is the um, very often we use Bash to do very simple things, <clears throat> and sometimes you could trick various Nix print groups to do them for you, um, but fundamentally. Uh, having bash there is brings in like a system it brings in a bunch of dependencies that you might not necessarily want if all you're trying to do is copy a file or make a sim link or do very like primitive operations um, so if uh, you had a more kind of cross-platform way of doing it or a system independent way of doing something um, that would be um, in some ways helpful Yeah, and so with um, right, so so I guess that also goes into Yurik uh, uh, or Yuri. I mentioned uh, two weeks ago. I think he mentioned uh, Wasm as like a target for next builders, and that kind of goes into that uh, like not having platform specific binaries and stuff. Um, yeah, I I have also heard the hello. I have also heard the idea that bash uh, the the phases. Um, I think Puffpatch mentioned how the phases could be implemented as like some higher uh, like a, f a function taking function. What is it called? Higher order. Higher order function. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but because it's it's bash. It kind of doesn't allow that, right? We bash does. You can pass functions in bash. Uh, also, like just I don't know, type checking in general is like non-existent in bash. It's based on strings. Um, and uh, also, just thinking of uh, uh, arrays which can't be nested, a map uh, associative arrays which can't be nested. Uh, yeah, things like that. Just 
Right, those would be nice to have, but then again, it doesn't affect most users. Since like package expressions in the end are usually not written in bash, and, and that's that might be a good argument for why it, bash or any other language doesn't matter that much because we will be using like high level next wrappers around everything. Um, yeah, or what, what, what do you think? Like, should it, does it even matter that we, that we have pick a specific language that's easy to use for most users when package expressions aren't really written, uh, using that language? I am not, I, 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 I remember Bash isn't a big priority for me if I have to rank all the things that I think should sort of architecturally change and next packages replacing Bash would be quite far down the list. And for essentially that reason, there's in the scheme of things, not all that much Bash code. And it very rarely needs to be changed significantly in my experience. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's not not worth considering alternatives. And I do think that moving to uh, OSH, the oil um, dash equivalent, at, at some point would be a good thing to do just because it's a, a, a you know, has all of its various advantages and would be an easy transition. But yeah, I think because we don't end up with all that much, you know, fancy bash stuff happening anyway, most people really don't need to write bashy things when doing packages, but it's not that important. Uh, uh, one note, like from my point of view, you we should replace bash with basically anything that supports like a proper structures and uh, has some built-in so we could drop like all the core utils find utils and what have you uh also there are like some edge cases where like we're using grab technically it could be interpreted as regex and uh, the logic existing that we have in bash is unreadable at least to me uh, uh, to be did fair, you say the syntax of bash is unreadable or so you could go over like uh, a setup script or whatever we were calling it like the dependency right, yeah. mapping like jumping around all over the place as using the global context basically everywhere like uh I don't know, like, I can't read it. I did try. I want to, like, re-implement the cross-compiling the way it was done there, but I gave up on it. Uh, also, if I recall correctly, Thesis has some points on Bash. Uh, I'm opening, opening it up right now. Uh, what are you looking for? Um, I'm looking at this thesis. I remember it has some points on Bash. Uh, just searching for it. All right. Um, yeah, I'll write a point here. Something else that's, that is probably going to come up is um, just existing other large, um, you know, package specification um, methods. So. If you're trying to like look at how some other ecosystem packages something, right? What are the most common ways they do so? Um, so let's say you're trying to kind of glean some insights from how like Debian is packaging something, then you know most of their stuff is going to be um, in you know Bash functions. If you're looking at um, you know other ecosystems, you know are those ecosystems something that's worth kind of having some similarity with so that you can kind of easily port things over. I think as long as we can easily express ourselves in selected language, it should be fine. Like, let's not pick 
Haskell for this. <laughs> Maybe not quite the tool for the job. <laughs> Hearing all of this to me just strengthens the case for um, for the uh, for Osh because um, it seems like 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 you know having something that is shell that is bash like has a huge number of benefits. One is that um, people are used to it. Another is that it's used widely across the ecosystem outside of mixed packages. Um, in, including in other package repositories and also in, uh, in, 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 you know, build systems themselves. Um, and uh, we wouldn't have to substantially rewrite, you know, we wouldn't have to en masse try to convert packages, which we would with anything that wasn't largely bash compatible. Um, and it seems like the, uh, like overall, you know, the things that we really want that would make things better for us are things like, you know, better arrays and stuff. And I think OSH provides those. Um, I'd have to check. Um, so yeah, it's really solidifying to me that uh, I think that's the way to go. Does uh, maybe also good to look into if Osh has like a way to do libraries or like has a built-in set of, of tools and, and regex matching and stuff like that. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if Osh, if that's kind of in line with Osh's uh, goals to provide this. The other thing is, I, I said on Matrix the other day, like if we get in on this at this fairly early stage, if we would like there to be a way to do libraries and there isn't, there's a good chance we can convince them that that would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I'm not sure how much OSH changed, but I wasn't a big fan. Like, does not provide as much tooling as I'd like, and we are just relying on something in a way unstable, which who knows what is, is it going to support in the future and now, like Windows and ESDs and RISC five, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that is probably probably the main uh. Uh, argument against us that it's just yeah. unstable and fairly so, like, immature. But for now? For now, yes. Actually, I recall the author was building some new project. I can't recall how it was called, or at least there were plans for it, similar to Oil Shell. Uh, so, like, from my point of view, the perfect shell would be new shell because it has a lot of built ins proper like control structures like we can easily work with the data flow there uh issue is that well, it's written in that rust mean, new, is shell. That new shell uh oh new shell, is it and new shell? shell. Yeah, yeah so that's like our perfect shell for this kind of task and almost like a perfect solution aside the fact that it uses rust uh to be fair, like GCC is gaining Rust support, but I don't think we're going to. I don't think that's a good way to go about it, since we probably would need to include the Rust support in the tarball anyways. Uh, but yeah, anyways, and in terms of languages, the perfect language would be TypeScript uh, because it's popular. Everyone knows it. It's supports metaprogramming well enough to represent a shell uh, great async support. But yet again, uh, there is no runtime that is easily bootstrappable. There are a couple of uh, JavaScript runtimes that are easily bootstrappable, but at that point, not sure if it's worth it. I'd like to offer a reflection. Um, it, 
I haven't fully read all the notes from the past meetings, but it seems like we're talking about multiple time scales almost. I mean, the I guess the topic is framed as like replacing bash, but you know, you could almost break that up into uh, multiple plans, you know, like what would what would we want to prioritize from these features or motivations we've talked about today like better debugging or a language that's easy to bootstrap or has less dependencies or is easier to onboard or more people know it um, or is compatible with our existing code base uh, you know you could you could almost like matrix out those uh, reasons and then like put it up into different time scales like to me supporting windows or something or the, you know those those are like much longer questions without without making any judgments about you know whether those uh, other decisions are worth uh making also i don't know i just deal with a lot of architecture software architecture decisions in my job and a lot of it comes down to like uh, managing the complexity of, of decisions like this. Like to me, uh, I wanna say that Culus's argument makes sense to me about, you know, having backwards compatibility with not having to rewrite a lot of the bash code today. Not that we couldn't do that. I mean, that, that's why I'm saying multiple uh, decisions I think could, could benefit us here. Yeah, it also I guess comes there down. is a, uh, I guess there is a worry that uh, if we happen to transition to OSH right now, uh, we would kind of increase the, the burden of transition afterwards if we were to switch to another language again. Uh, because if we support OSH, people would use our specific features, which then would might be harder to port. Um, and it's then two steps instead of one, kind of like ripping off the Band-Aid aid approach of just doing a transition, but only once. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the total opposite of what would happen because our specific features are things that are, you know, things that exist in normal programming languages. So if our goal was to switch to OSH and then switch to, I don't know, ZSH, that might be, um, something that we'd have to worry about because we'd start to use features that weren't um, things that you typically find in shells. But if we um, switch to OSH and start using the features it provides that are just like sort of programming language-y standard features, that's going to make it easier to um, uh, uh, switch to an actual programming language in future if we want to. Um, which I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced we, 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 we would, but I still think it would make it easier to. Um, because like, like a lot of the stuff that we do in Bash is like, you know, build up some string and eval it to run a function or something. Um, and that's going to be very hard to port. You're, you have to redo that. Um, yeah, I, I, I very much agree now. It, yeah. There, there is, there, there's also the question of what can we sell the, what, what, like what, what, what can we sell the sort of wider Nix packages, um, um, you, you know, developer community on. And I think switching to us, like, you know, I'm sure we've all seen the, the OSH RFC um, and, and, and that, that was a hard enough sell because of not being 100% Bash compatible um, as it was. And I think that trying to, like, there's no way we would ever convince y y people enough to get consensus that switching to TypeScript was a good idea. Um, and I know that that wasn't necessarily proposed. Um, I, like, what, 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 what he just said is that that would be um, their, uh, you know, perfect language. But the, 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 the smaller the change is the easier it's going to get through, it's going to be to get through. And I think that a change as fundamental as this is going to be a huge uphill battle. Um, you know, even if it was changing to 
something that was just almost but not quite bash with one difference. Um, and uh, so, yeah, move, moving to OSH would let us get, you, you, you know, it would bring a bunch of benefits on its own. Um, it would be significantly easier and it would put us in a better place to transition to uh, something else down the line if we decided that we wanted to do that. Uh, I mentioned this at some point, but uh, from my point of view, if we have basically any language that is not Bash, so basically something readable implemented, it shouldn't be all that difficult to like convert to basically anything else. Like we just need the whole dependency grabbing and management to be readable for starters. Or John Erickson by my side. <laughs> uh, also, I wrote down this list. I don't know if you guys have anything to that add or discuss. Oh, yeah. Uh, I see the below the, the notes there. Yeah, language requirements. Right, so easily. Uh, so I guess I, I wanted to talk a bit about this easily bootstrapable. Um, is this really a requirement? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to argue then. <laughs> 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 I because I talked a bit about with Ericsson about like the STD and bootstrapping, and like the, the the kind of bootstrapping could be done in like a separate thing entirely, where we just bootstrap all the packages without reliance on like the, the this new language OSH or whatever. Um, and that could also work, uh, although it would probably be harder to do and kind of duplicate some, some work. Yeah, but at but that point, we're probably how are you going? defining packages twice. Uh, yeah. yeah, it would. Yeah, it would probably be like defining packages twice, like I don't know, GCC once with a bash builder and once with, yeah, that, that's not great. Yeah, so that, yeah, then, then you end up with two shells and you have to get the one you're using from boot, for bootstrapping for somewhere as well. And then some packages are written in one language and some in another. That's not going to make right, things yeah. easier. <laughs> All right, but yeah, OK. Um, Find accepted. Uh, the, the next one, support for real data structures. I think that's that's a good requirement. Um, Built-ins to deal with data. So that's like libraries, I guess. Like libraries. Regex for starters. Like substitution contains includes functions. Uh, preferably, we would have something like write file, copy file as well, because why depend on something like raw details? Yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty good. So we yeah. essentially don't have to spawn processes for that. Uh, Ash? Uh, yeah, I, I, wait, can you hear me? My... You're a bit low in volume. A bit super low. How about now? It's better. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to uh mention again uh Ruby um because it's bootstrappable and has real data structures has uh built-ins for all the stuff that we want. Um, it's. Uh, cross-platform, uh, bootstrappable on a lot of different platforms. Um, Supports WebAssembly too. What was that? Supports WebAssembly too. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I don't know that that's a strong argument for me, but... Yeah, I just uh, saw okay. a couple of peeps really hyped about it. <laughs> um, but I, I also want to argue... Uh, in favor of uh like switching to osh now and uh switching to something else later maybe because I, I think there's like a big like desire to want to 
um, do everything at once. But it's actually probably going to be a lot easier for us if we do it in incremental improvements, even if that means redoing some work that we already did. Yeah, yeah, I guess also, uh, well, I, to some degree, yes, uh, but also like we, like one of these steps or these kinds of steps would be like years apart, like I don't know, 10 years or so. Uh, like if we switch to Osh now and we kind of, well, I guess considering that most people won't have to interact with it directly since people just write package builders, it might actually be fine. But if, if enough people have to change their behavior, we can't do that twice in like a couple of years. I think in I think somebody in the matrix or somewhere said that like something like ninety five percent of packages don't use like interact with bash at all, so that that kind of I guess puts it into context. Also, isn't the whole thing with Osh that like it's bash compatible, so we don't have to change anything now. We just have like more tools available, it, but we don't it, have to change the existing bash stuff. It's like 99% compatible. Um, so it's like, 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 like we wouldn't have to change. This was something that came up in the, the OSH RFC. We wouldn't have to change nothing, but we would have to make fairly limited changes. It wouldn't be a, a rewrite. Um, would it be and, something we could do automatic testing on? Um, just yeah, I, I mean, I would have thought so. I, you could see if things build the same. Yeah, so uh, that makes our work a lot easier, I think. Uh, what I mainly don't like about the OSH idea is I feel like we're going to just change the builder and forget about it for like next 10 years. Well, that's on, that's then on, you know, if, if you think that, that it's, um worth doing more than that oh. then you can like 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 well if you're using we your only forget about it bash we only then... forget about it for 10 years if nobody is actively pushing for it for 10 years i can also imagine if we change the shell language to something that's more easily changeable then maybe more people will start changing stuff as well in the standard environment or whatever. Uh, I want to also mention here that um, a requirement should be that we can easily test, uh, test, uh, yeah, that we can easily test functions and, and things that the language provides, which currently with Bash is like really hard. Um, There's also some like unit testing know. frameworks in Bash. <laughs> I, I'm actually just looking at the unit testing framework in Bash. Yeah, it it, it kind of works. I, it, it's called BETS. Um, but uh, I do think, I, I, I mean, I come from Haskell where there's like static types. Uh, but like, even if you don't have static types, you can have uh, test suits for, for Python or, or, or so. Um, and if we have a test suit, then uh, a quick check is really nice in, in Haskell. Uh, if you have a test suit, then we can also more safely make changes and be sure that it shouldn't break the whole world. So we're using Haskell That's sort of for the orthogonal, right? though, right? Like I didn't get because that. It, it, because... That's sort of orthogonal, I think, because like there's no reason you know, the reason that we don't have any tests at the moment is not because there aren't bash test framework to use or that it's too hard. Like, you know, on, on, on one level, you sort of, you don't need a test framework. You can just have, you know, a bunch of tests that are, you know, each batch bash script is a test and then you run all these scripts and check that they, you know, don't, don't, don't fail. I don't think like if we want a test suite, we can have a test suite with bash.
I, I would argue that like bash being bash makes it really hard to test stuff. Like even just the fact that you like can't, uh, I don't know, function right. arguments. Uh, yeah. uh, so I mean, there is a there is a, a weird type checking library for bash. You you could you could use it. I I agree that that's true. We would probably have to do a lot of extra work to make it possible and inconvenient to test in bash uh, how about we just rule out bash to the points of for support for real data structures and built-ins lack of built-ins well yeah. Bash has associative arrays which are essentially maps it doesn't support can, nested i mean i'm not saying well, it's can, can, insane can, can we let jk who's had their hand up for a while speak please oh yeah Thanks. Um, yeah, one thing that keeps coming to mind is sometimes we need to use uh, data structures uh, is another option, not just to keep bash and then drop into, you know, Python, Ruby, whatever, when we actually need to. I think the problem with doing that is that a lot of standard end is implemented as like bash, you know, callbacks and stuff. So not stuff that a subprocess can uh, take care of. Um, I'm thinking, for example, of um, uh, hooks are implemented as sort of bash arrays of names of functions that it'll then call. Um, and, and, the implement, and, and the implementation of that is pretty hairy, and I think it would be one of the leading candidates for uh, a better implementation with a language that had um, proper arrays and things. Yeah, um, I think that the hook change would be the biggest driver of changing language. Um, the, 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 the worst parts of our current bash code are, I think, the parts that would least lend themselves to being uh, uh, sub-processes. Um, so I, I don't think we can just switch to another language only for the hard parts. I also think that if we're like if we have a more powerful language than bash that is not like a lot of um burden to switch to like osh then I don't see any reason not to use it um like we we could also um I guess like it would be worthwhile to do some research and uh see what happens if we do just change it out and how much stuff breaks do you know if the rfd got as far as doing this i'm not sure i haven't taken a look at the rfc in depth to be honest that would probably be good homework for everyone i have but not for many months um yeah. so we, we should all have a read over the where the option yeah. uh, is at. Same here, but if I recall correctly, currently standard English is OSH compatible. So there is that. There were a couple of changes merged in. Um, some changes were merged in to make it OSH compatible. Yeah. Okay. If if SGNV is OSH compatible, then we could just switch to OSH by default. But um, like um, use Bash for packages that are currently broken with OSH, and just like weed out those over time. Yeah, and hopefully it wouldn't take. You know, we'd be in this in-between state for a pretty short amount of time anyway, because hopefully it's just that use such weird bash features that they're not OSH compatible. I think the thing that would make this take the longest time is not so much the changing packages and, and to be OSH compatible. It's going to more be about waiting for OSH to be at a level of stability 
where we're comfortable uh, switching to it. One thing that we might want to wait for, for example, is for them to finish rewriting in C++ and dropping their self-maintained Python 2 fork. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I, uh, right, I mean, that's that's really the only problem with OSH, uh, but I, as far as I know, nobody at least here has big reservations against OSH. Um, and so uh, if we, if we, as you said, just wait, uh, like make it possible to use in Nix packages by default or opt in or try to, I don't know, have a separate Hydro job set for OSH and then wait for it to become compatible. Um, and that might be a very reasonable thing to do. And, and so I guess uh, I'm going to I'm gonna take a look at the OSH RFC for uh, next week uh, and, and see what, what, what the state of it is. I, I don't know too much about it myself just yet. Um, Right, and also just look into OSH, like what, uh, does anybody happen to know here, like what OSH actually provides from the requirements we have, like? I sent language reference of OSH here somewhere, uh, yeah, line 73. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, it provides data structures, I uh, haven't really noticed any, like, regex matching, but it probably has something. Uh, it should be fine. It's better choice than Bash, but yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. Um, if I had to vote, I would yet again pick Ruby, but you know, not my call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and Bathroom. Hey, hey, I just wanted to ask some of the background on those requirements uh, dealing with data like regex and I guess I associate that with moving away from core utils. Is, is the goal for that for benefiting speed, like uh, not not doing doing less process calls or portability or smaller? Uh, I can answer that. Uh, so if we drop like all these extra dependencies, it's easier for us to bootstrap it. Uh, the, we need to, there are less things to evaluate uh, at the time. And yeah, just performance in some cases, I would imagine something like write shell script would help quite a bit. Is, is, are you actually bottlenecked on performance of small builders? Because so far, um, no, like I've been asking really. about this. Uh, um, what I like the, about it is mainly the simpler evaluation and ease of bootstrap like since you just need a shell of source or that language without like adding like 10 extra packages so any language is build system depend on having for utils available unless we're going to completely redo that uh could you repeat that i couldn't quite hear you won't any languages build system depend on having core utils available uh Quite possibly, yeah. You would need it at the build time, but it wouldn't be part of the tarball. So you need it as part of the, you know, you need it in the bootstrap yeah. chain probably before well, you even got to your language. Usually, so at that point you've already built it. Make, but yeah. And make, make you know how it works. Yeah. <laughs> your core utils. Um, and in terms of eval time, core utils is one package. It's going to be negligible at all time. Uh, so like each time we're doing like a run command or even fetchers, I believe it's loading like everything in. But isn't that part of the whole eval? Like you're not usually building a self-contained run command. You're building, you know, some package that had 200 dependencies and some of those will be run command and doesn't like, you know, evaluating core utils or whatever, doesn't that get memoized? 
Well, it's like we are working with this as it is right now. It's fine. Uh, I think it's more of a nice to have thing. That's all. Okay. Um, I. I think that the stronger argument in favor of moving away from like using core utils for um, builders is portability because core utils is like uh, Unixy. And uh, if we want to be portable to other, um, other things like windows or whatever, um, then we need to not be using uh, platform-specific um, functionality. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, we, we are heading towards the end of the meeting. Um, so, but yeah, I, th I think it's pretty clear that we should consider OSH as an alternative. Um, also look into what OSH really provides for us, whether it's an alternative. Um, right, uh, I, I do quickly want to mention that there is not just STDN that contains bash functions but also a whole bunch of other setup hooks. Um, and like a lot of them are, a lot of the ones that are commonly used are not in, in SGDN. So like the uh, bash script for handling multiple outputs, for example, is in like uh, setup hooks, multiple outputs dot shell or something. And there's, th this is a setup hooks directory in next packages contains like a whole bunch of bash code for doing various things. Mm. Like, also the shebangs, output wrappers, a lot of things. Also the language specific builders, they contain quite some uh, bash code, uh, primarily in the form of hooks. Um, can anyone comment like from design standpoint, um, is there any better way of dealing with setup hooks? And I'm mainly interested in something complex as GCC setup hook. I know John has a lot to say about this um, and uh, isn't here. Um, so I'm, I'm sure other people will also have things to say, but it would be worth bringing this up sometime when John's around. Mm -hmm. Regarding hooks, what I would still like to see is uh, some way to describe dependencies between hooks. So if we're looking at more complex builds, um, the, the, the difficult part is to, 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 to say when a hook should run. We have like default phases, but that is actually not enough. So several times some hooks need to run before a certain phase, but you don't know when exactly they run and that causes trouble. And this is especially with the uh, yeah language specific builders. I bet yeah, that would be easier if we had data structures. Hmm? Exactly. And, um, yeah, and on that topic, I, of course, the, uh, uh, what's it called? The change in the standard amp. So, so you can read the JSON. So you have the JSON file. I forgot the name for this. Uh, the structured address. Attributes, yeah, exactly. Um, which unfortunately has been blocked already for many years. And uh, I think this one is especially important for the more complex builders. Basically blocking things there. Yeah, I th that also reminds me of um, uh, I, uh, I I've recently thought about like do we even want separate builders for all the uh, different languages or do we just want one builder like stdnf.make derivation but provide all the languages uh, specific features as like plugins of source so you'd say like. Uh, make derivation plugins equals that and that. So uh, the way I, I think, started... 
uh, the way I started building this thing is just a module system, so you can just extend it with additional modules, and modules can like basically do whatever with a particular builder. So yeah, it's more of a composable model instead of like inheritance like we currently have. It's really important that it's possible to mix uh, these language specific builder things. Um, and that's one of the big advantages in our in the current mix packages that our setup hooks have over the like language specific builders is that um, build like you know build Rust package doesn't compose with if you also have some parts that are JavaScript or uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, whatever and so I'm uh, it, it, it's it's important to have it be composable it doesn't have to be through hooks of course and yeah. um, this, but this is... I really hope we can get away from the language specific builder mix function that do that, 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 that do a whole build and don't integrate with anything else because at the moment we have two ways of building all the same packages using standard ends and hooks or using language specific builders and the language specific builders are in the current uh, state of mixed package is entirely redundant. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, like in some of the language specific builds, we've been splitting them up into hooks already. Um, also because we more often need to start mixing languages during a build. Uh, there's quite yeah. some Python packages out there that re uh, require Rust. Um, build, I think build Rust package has been basically entirely split apart into hooks now, which yes. is great and means that it could hopefully maybe um, get started in the process of just going away soon and we only use the hooks. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Um, I, uh, we are at uh, out of time for now. Um, I think I, I did start the discussion here about uh, kind of a new discussion, but we can also continue this in the channel. Uh, all uh, right, but yeah, I. I wrote yeah. down some homework. I think it would be nice if we all were to do that. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, we. Speak out unless someone has anything else to add. Yeah, I mean, the people who have time, we, we can't impose any work on anybody here. Um, but yeah, thanks. That sounds great. I'll take a look at those. Um, all right, but yeah, thanks everybody for joining. And uh, see you next week, hopefully, on, in the channel. Have a nice day.